Hi, thanks for tuning in. Bob here with JD Squared. Right off the bat, let me apologize for some of the background noise you may hear. I'm videoing on a live factory floor, and boy, they're going all out today. They're making a lot of noise over there. In fact, what I'm just drove in with this Harley, a little extra noise for us. So anyway, um, I apologize in advance for that. What we're gonna be cutting in this video is a piece of eight inch pipe. It's about 10 feet long. It's got a half inch wall thickness on it right here. I believe it's schedule 80, eight inch pipe. So let's go ahead and talk about why I'm cutting a 10 foot section. It has to do with inertia. The motors inside the power head right here have clearly been sized for a particular size range. So on the XR6, that size range was three quarter to six inch. Everything within that range should cut beautifully. Now, once you get beyond that size, now we're talking 24 foot long pieces, you'll run up against the inertia problem. And what it is, is that motor has been tuned for a specific maximum inertia. So that inertia happens to be six inch schedule 80 pipe 24 feet long. It's a hunk of pipe. It's a strong motor. However, if we go larger, like this 8 inch, we can no longer cut 24 inches, I mean 24 feet, because the inertia is too great. So what you need to do, if you're contemplating cutting oversized pipe in the XR6, get with us first off the bat. And the other thing is, we're going to need to determine the inertia of the workpiece. That's fairly easy to do for a lot of common stuff. You can actually get it off the, uh, the internet. If you look up pipe, you'll see the, the dimensions and the inertia value of it, and then you can multiply it out by ever how long of a piece. It turns out that a 10-foot section of 8-inch pipe, Schedule 80, is roughly inertially equivalent to a 6-inch Schedule 80 pipe, 24 feet long. So that's what we're going to be cutting in this video. To accomplish this, we're going to use a couple of attachments for the XR6. Now these also pertain to the XR12, the larger machine. They look a little different, same exact job. And what we're going to do is we're going to be using two attachments. One of them we call the heavy duty roller plate and it's got very large bearings with steel rollers on them right here. The other is the exact same part except that we have removed the rollers and you'll see why I did that in a second. The other thing I'm going to be showing you is how to adjust the head in order to accomplish this. So without further ado, let's get after it. The very first thing I need to do is go ahead and in, in place the tool that does not have the rollers on the tooling rail kind of near the chuck. So I'm just going to pick one of the holes out, this one right here, using the supplied 12 millimeter bolt and nut. Remember, all parts in the um, in the XR6 and 12s and all are metric. I don't even have to tighten this one down with a wrench to be honest with you. I just want to get it in pretty good right now. Alrighty. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to take the one with the rollers in it and I am going to place it about eight feet down the frame. So the idea is I want the far end of the pipe resting on these rollers and the near end sitting in this groove. Now, you'll see what's going to happen. Since there's no rulers here, that means that this end of the pipe is going to be lower than that end, and that's exactly what we want to do. So let me go ahead, I'll bolt this in the machine right now. The XR6 has been designed to handle some pretty large heavy material. Well, there's always a problem when you do that, and that's how do you move the material once it's in the machine. Now, with the XR6, we have fixed height tooling that goes down the rail. This means you don't have to adjust every roller in your whole machine. You've only got to adjust one item. And that one item is the power head right here. It can be adjusted up or down and in and out. So if you notice, I've got the pipe here ready to load and I'm about two or so inches in front of the power head. Now let me show you something here. There is a bolt back here, 19 millimeter head on it. Use a wrench. I loosen it up and that's going to allow me to slide the chuck forward and back. Now, I've got a picture, look at the corner, you'll see which bolt I'm talking about. So all I'm doing is I'm moving it to the rear. Now, we're gonna bring in the pipe and we're gonna load it onto this tool. So while I'm doing that, I'll let the video roll so you can kind of see what's going on. Let me reposition the camera. This is generally a two-person operation. I could have done it by myself, but 
you know, why prove my wife right that sometimes I'm kind of stupid? We're going to do it with two people to be safe. Anyway, the idea is, is my operator, Cody, right here is going to run the forklift and I'm going to make sure that the part doesn't roll down the, the forks too quickly. I've got this adjustable backstop fitted to those fittings that I showed you. And the idea for them is to prevent the tubing from going too far. There's about a quarter of an inch, call it six millimeters of clearance between the pipe and this back gauge once this thing settles down. I will take a picture of that also. All right, Cody, if you don't mind, let's go ahead and back her up a little bit. It's a heavy piece of pipe, I'm telling you. All right, now you're gonna need to go on back, go on back. And what I'm gonna do is I want him to keep going, keep going, keep going. You got about another two feet. All right, now do me a favor. Now you gotta be real careful when you work your hands around this stuff. Um, go ahead and tilt it forward just a little bit. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And what I'm doing is I'm want, I want it to kind of roll, there you go. All right, now, Cody, go on down. I mean, back out a little bit more. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Hold up right there. Now I've got the forks right here. He's just above the rails right there. So we're looking good. We can't get any lower. Go ahead and tilt forward just a little bit more. Okay, raise up the forks a little bit so we're off the rail, so we back, all right. That's a little bit too much. Tilt, tilt forward a little bit more. All right, that's good. Back up, please. Keep going, and she's gonna fall off these forks. Keep going. All right, back on out. There we go. We've got our tube loaded. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide the chuck forward right here. And then we're going to adjust the jaws and we're going to grab a hold of this pipe here. Let me go ahead and reposition the camera. I've gone ahead and using the control panel, I've rotated the chuck so that one of the jaws is roughly facing straight up. I've also made sure that where I rotate it, I can get the chuck key onto the jaw. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to slide the jaw in. Now, another thing, you should be able to see it in the video here, I'm grabbing the outside of the jaws. You don't necessarily need to grab the, use the jaws on the inside faces to grab your pipe. You can grab anywhere. So I'm using the outside of the jaws to actually grab the pipe. So I'll slide that in. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to sit here and spin this thing open until they grab a hold of the pipe. Now what will generally happen is while you're doing this, it's going to raise that pipe up. So I'm going to go ahead and raise this up. Give me a second. Okay. Okay, that's pretty snug right there. Now, what I've got to do is after I get it relatively snug is take my 19 millimeter wrench and tighten that hex bolt that I was telling you about earlier. Okay, now we've got the chuck locked. Now what we have to do is adjust the chuck up or down in order to level the pipe. To do that, we're going to use a torpedo level, put it on it, take a look at it, and it looks like we've got, we're actually pretty darn good. In fact, I don't have to adjust it. Um, we're gonna leave it right where it's at right now. And what it's showing me, the bubble is just slightly, we're slightly high on this side, which is not a bad thing at all because that'll help the coolant run down the pipe. But I'm still within the lines. The bubble is still within the lines. I'm just a little high. Now, a little high. Now let's just say, for instance, normally we may be a little bit on the low side, then I'm gonna use a larger wrench and you'll find a hex nut right up under here and you're gonna adjust it up or down. Now, in order to do that, there are two bolts on the back face of this here. If you're gonna adjust up or down, there are two 12 millimeter nuts, I mean. We're gonna to have to break them loose. There's two nuts that are capped. You'll see it in the, in the picture that I'll post up there. We don't ever adjust them. We just loosen up the other two. Now we can raise and lower the chuck where we want. Once we have it, everything level the way we want, we will tighten back down those two 12 millimeter nuts. We're good to go. All righty, let's go ahead and um, go to the control panel so we can make a couple adjustments I need to show you. Now that we've got our pipe loaded, we need to go ahead and tell the machine where it's at. Now the way we do this, we go to the right menu and we select our wizards. Now in our wizards, you have different ones. There's rectangular and square, there's structural. We're interested in the probe round tube. We come over here, we enter 
8.625, which I've already done, and I hit generate. Now I can go back to my plasma cut and run this program, and that will center and will basically tell the machine where the pipe is at. So let's go ahead and hit the go button. Let's go ahead and review real quick a couple of things that I've done. First thing, when I loaded up the tooling, remember I loaded this particular tool very close to the chuck because it's going to act as a cradle so that when we drop this thing down, it falls down into it. Now when I raise the chuck, that raised the pipe off of this tooling part or that tooling plate right there. Now this tooling plate down here, the one that has the heavy duty rollers, notice I've moved it in a couple of feet from the end of the pipe. The idea is I would like for this roller to carry uh, more weight than the chuck is holding up. Now the chuck has very large bearings and it's very stout, but to be safe, I would rather carry a lot of the load on the rollers. So anytime I can move this roller to this side of the 50% mark, halfway down the pipe, that's a good spot. So right here I chose about two feet. That looks pretty good. Now, another thing to, to mention, if we're cutting this pipe out, let's just say we cut the end off, and then we go ahead and we cut on this side of the roller, bad things are likely going to happen. Um, you could use multiple roller plates in the machine. It won't hurt a thing. And in a situation like that, you would have to. Because let's say we cut the pipe right here. What's going to happen? Pipe's going to fall down this way. It's going to fall down that way. Well, when this one falls that way, it's going to raise up here knocking the torch out of the way. Now in the real world, probably all that's going to happen is going to dislodge the torch and the machine is going to turn itself off. But why tempt the gods? Be careful about that. Now let's just say I did want to cut this pipe into a bunch of smaller pipes. Then what I'm going to do is inside of Camelot, which generated the program that you're going to see run, I'm going to put micro joints in it so that the part cannot separate. And then after I remove it from the machine, I could take my plasma uh, uh, cutoff wheel or something like that and cut through those micro joints and separate the parts. So got to be careful about that right there. Now, the other thing I've done, of course, is we've already showed you turning the rapids down to 50%. When you're working with oversized pipe, very, very important. Do not forget to do that. All right, let's go ahead and load the program up and we can cut this thing. Okay, before you can load or run any program, you have to tell the machine where that program's origin is. Typically, it's going to be the end on your pipe if it's generated out of a program like our software, Camelot. To do that, I'm going to use the keyboard right here, and I'm going to bring the torch down until I'm at the end of the pipe. Now, I'm just a little bit on the inside because we've already cut this pipe a little bit out here. We don't want to cut through that again, so I am just inside of that. Now, I will go down to the control panel, load the program, tell it where the origin is, and we'll hit the run button. Back here at the control panel, let's go ahead and start in the upper left right here. And as I mentioned, when we're cutting oversized pipe, we're going to want to bring down the rapids to 50%. So that's the first thing we want to do. Now earlier, we set the Y0, we moved the torch head to the end of the pipe. I'm going to make sure I'm on the primary head because I had the torch selected and I'm going to select Y0. Now I'm going to go to the lower left and I am going to select my settings. And I've already previously done that. This is why they're um, pre-filled. But let me show you what I did. I selected mild steel. You got aluminum or stainless. Then I selected the half inch wall from the drop down. And then I selected flat, which is the default because you could also select wavy or corrugated, but this is flat tube. And then the other thing I did was I selected my consumable and we have a 65 amp shielded nozzle in the machine. So we'll pick that one right there and I say, okay. Now down here in the lower left, it will give me the amperage that I need to go back there and set the cutter at, the hypertherm. However, if you're running one of the newer sync units, um, our latest software will automatically set that for you. So that's kind of a, a kind of a nice feature. Now, what we need to do is go ahead, say file, import. We're going to bring in my 8-inch pipe. It's right there, nothing changed because obviously I already had it loaded. Now real quick, if I hold down the middle mouse button or the, or the scroll wheel, 
I can rotate this around. That is the part that we're going to cut. We do have program restart for round, rectangular, and squares. In fact, if I zoom in on it, you can actually see the lead in and lead outs that the cutter is going to do. Okay, we're looking good. The next step is let's just go ahead and hit the run button. Hey Devin, after this cut, hit the stop button, please. Now one thing I didn't mention earlier, the control panel is, our control panel gives us the setting for the amperage of the plasma. It was 65 amps, and I went ahead and I, I adjusted that. There we go, that's our cut. Can you move, the, move it out of the way, please? Alrighty. Still see the cooling coming out. Let's zoom, let's get on down here. You can see the quality of the cut. Looks really, really nice. Anyway, that is how we cut eight inch pipe. Okay, that's it. That's all we had to do to get our part cut off. Now, I stopped the cutting video after the first cut. I figured why waste time? People want shorter videos. We short it down. But anyway, this is your part. Fits on perfect. That's all I've got for you today. I really appreciate you taking your time out and watching it. If you've got any other questions, please email support. In the meantime, hope you have a great day or night or whatever it happens to be. Thank you very much. Goodbye.